everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. This your boy, Superb Kicks. Stop our styles. Together, we're Feats in the Streets. We wear our pairs. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to yet another episode of Feats in the Streets. Also, remind everyone to follow us on Instagram. And as you already know, that is the only means of contacting us. So, any questions, comments, concerns you may have, be sure to send them to our inbox. We'll respond to you in a timely manner. Also, don't forget, we have a Twitter account. Same handle, at Feats in the Streets. Be sure to follow there as well. We will follow you back. Most definitely. And don't forget to hit the like button for this video. Stay active in the comment section. If you haven't, please hit that subscribe button. And most importantly, don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified every time we drop a new video. That's right. That's right. And on this episode, you know, we've been waiting on this for months to get this one together. We're going to do a little comparison video on the 2012 versus the 2019 pair of the Bread 11s. And, um, you know... Great shoe. Uh, when that, so without hesitation, we're gonna jump right into the review and get on, get to it. All right, all right. First off, on the comparison, obviously the first notable thing that you notice if you know anything about them, obviously, is gonna be the, the cut on the patent leather, the high versus the low. Um, I know a lot of people, they, they kept the high, which is true to the OG form, um, which a lot of people really, really were anticipating and all. But personally for me, I, I like the low cut better. I think it's just because I, I'm a short guy. And I like the low, the short look to it. I don't know if that's the reason or not, but personally, I like it better with the low cut. Now, one thing I would like to see on the 2012 pair, even with the low cut, would be the white outline around the patent leather. You know, that's a nice touch. Um, kind of just pops off the shoe and it adds a little bit of white versus just on being on the outsole. But um, an another subtle thing that, you know, if you know about the shoe and all that that you may notice or may not but is the direction of the jump man on the left shoe uh, the 2012 pair obviously he's facing to the back and on the 2019 pair which was also on the 96 pair he's both, both of the jump man are facing forward so you know, that's a nice touch with, with that as well um they kept it really really good and and true to the og all the way down to the box um, also Nike Air on the insole, you know, that's a nice touch and everything. You got the Jumpman on the 2012 on the insole. Um, but overall, they did a really great job. Uh, obviously a holiday release, you don't see a lot of quality control issues. Um, and overlooking the, the new release here on both pair, I haven't seen any, you know, and like I say, it's, it's really hard to hide any quality control issues with that bright, you know, shiny patent leather. So thumbs up to them all the way around this shoe. They did a great job all the way down to the shiny insert, you know, jump man on the insert and everything with the glitter. I mean, how can you go wrong with this shoe, you know? And, and, and I think with it being so iconic, they know they have to get it right, you know? And um, so overall for me, this shoe is, is a must have for me in my collection. So it gets a nine and a half. I mean, I don't, I don't see how you could rate it any lower if, if you know, have it in your collection as well. All right, for me, I'm gonna elaborate a little bit more on the quality control on both pairs. Both pairs, just looking over them, um, don't see no flaws at all. Um, really ideal um, how you want your Jordans to come. And like you mentioned in on the high cut um, patent leather with the white on top of it, that's a, I mean, an excellent touch to it. And I didn't know how much I liked it, the high cut until looking at the low cut on the 2012s, you know, I, unfortunately I don't have these in my collection no more, um, but looking at the low cut from the high cut, I didn't know how much a fan I am of the high cut patent leather, but I'm really a fan of this and I'm digging this right here. And um, also the 23 on the back, I prefer the 2012 uh, version with the fuller um, 23 instead of the littler one right there, this one right here, it kind of like, if you're not really a Jordan fan, it, it's like, what does that say? Yeah. You know what I mean? With this one, you know it's a 23, but this one right here, looking at it, you'll be like, what does that say on the back? And that kind of like, I like that look with that. And also I like the look of the patent, I mean the carbon fiber on the bottom on the 2012. I like the gray and black, um, instead of the light gray and black on this one, um, I prefer the uh, the gray and black from the 2012. And other than that, um, besides the patent leather and the white around the patent leather and the 23 on the back end, and like you mentioned, the um, Jumpman facing in the uh, same direction on these is an excellent touch um, on these back to OG form. But only thing that I wish that these had would be a slide in, slide out box. Oh, you know, man. with the 11, you know, I'm a, I'm a sh uh, shoe box collector. 
Um, unfortunately, I don't have uh, drop fronts yet, but um, them 11s, I anticipate 11s coming out with the slide, slide box. I mean, I just love those boxes. They just show unique, but at the end of the day, we got an OG box like a 12, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm not too dissatisfied. As long as they didn't come with one of these new boxes, the black one with the gold on the top or something like that. But overall, man, I'm, I'm happy that the shoe came, came back out, um, re retroed um, ecstatic, should I say, and can't wait to get these on foot. And um, another thing that I like, um, it's a lot of things that I like on the 2012. Only thing that I honestly, that I like better on the 2019 version is the high patent um, leather and the white around it. The areas right here, the mesh area where the shoestrings is at on these, if you feel them, on the 2012, is giveable. It, yeah. it, it, it's soft. Yeah, it's Everything here. with with the 2019 version, it's hard. It's, it's like super hard um, on this, and I don't like that at all. I never felt this on an 11. I don't know if it's me tripping no, or something good. like this. I've never felt this mesh area as hard as it is right here on this 2019. I'm normally feeling like this right here yes. on the, this real soft touch on the 2012 version, and I like that better. So once again. If the 2012 version would have had the high patent leather, this would be the shoe I prefer. But since this has the high patent leather with the white cut and it's a new shoe right now, meaning it came out today, I'm gonna have to go with the 2019. But I mean, how can you judge these two shoes when they're both basically the same? Only thing different is the high patent um, leather. So um, at the end of the day, also, I'm gonna have to agree with you on this one. I'm gonna give this shoe a nine and a half. Can't go wrong with an OG grid. This is my second favorite Jordan ever. Um, Black Cement threes are my favorite. This is my second. And I'm gonna have to go with a tie with the bread folds and the Concords. I don't know which one I like better. I mean, of course I like the bread folds better, but you can't leave the concords out in your top, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm gonna have a three and a three A with that one. So just back to the shoe, like I mentioned, um, once again, I'm gonna um, give the shoe a nine and a half also with my boy. And if there's anything you wanna, if you wanna give them your top three, why, you know what I mean? Why yeah, I definitely have a top three and I have to break mine into two categories because uh, obviously with the bread, um, you know, this this is in the top three. The bread one, the black cement three, and the uh, bread eleven are my top three in the bread side and of colorway. And then non-bread colorway would definitely have to be um, white cement four. Um, but I have to go with probably the Concord, of course. And it's a toss-up for me as well on on the third one. Um, probably go with maybe the the, the Euro release of the Jim Red ones. Uh, that or possibly the Royal one. I, I, I wear that, I get that shoe a lot of wear as well. So, um, you know, that's my top three on two, both sides. And to go back and, and touch on something you mentioned too about the slide box. Um, like I say, I do like the fact that they did the OG box on this release here because there's so many of the OG touches that they added to it and, right. and stayed true to. I, I have, to, to this day, I do not understand why this was the box we were given in 2012. You know, 2010 was the Space Jam slide box, 2009 uh, was the Cool Gray slide box, um, 20, uh, 2011 was the Concourse slide box. 2012, you get a flip top box, at least we got the, the insert and everything, um, and everything on that. Uh, but that shoe gonna sell regardless. So oh yeah, have to spend the extra money. That's you know true. I mean? But and then they jump right back into the next year with the Gamma's um, slide box. The seventy two tens get a slide box. The I don't think the seventy two tens had a slide box. I, I got know. those in there. They don't have really. A slide box. I thought it did. Nah, oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm mistaken there. But I know that they kept that going on with the Gamma's and everything. It's like why did they skip that one year? Who knows? Whatever. They, regardless of not having a slide box, they definitely was making their way to my collection. And um. But yeah, I mean, other than that, that doesn't take away from the shoe. Obviously, you know, you hear people say you're not wearing the box. I'm a box collector. Um, I, I love looking and seeing the whole wall of boxes and everything. And I mean, get, you see how I label mine because it's hard to read labels, you know, you get so many different pairs. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, overall, I say this shoe would, for for me will never get lower than a nine. I don't care what they they'd have to literally do something crazy to it, um, and I don't see where they could because it's such an iconic shoe. So it'll always be a nine nine point five for me uh, as far as rating wise. Same here. I'm gonna have to go with the nine and a half. Also, I mean, just the iconic shoe. Um, if it wasn't for the bread three, this would be my favorite also. Um, but this is in my top two, 100%. Um, I just love this high patent leather on this cut right here. I mean, this is dope with the white on top of it, the white outline, and this is a really dope shoe. I can't wait to get this on feet. So once again, I'm gonna get at a nine and a half. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I didn't pick those up today. Uh, I got some other stuff on my radar, but I know that you know Jordan Brand will be doing a restock after New Year's like they always do. I, I may end up picking them up, may not. Um, I'm still pleased with my 2012 pair. I mean, tons of tons of being worn, tons of being worn, and still got a lot of life in them. So um, th this one right here, you know, the longevity is going to stay on these because the new release and the quality. I mean, so you got a lot of years of you know wearing them out and everything. So yeah, like I say, let us know if you it, where this rates in your collection. Um, like I say, obviously you hear both of us say it's in our top three. Um, I know a lot of other people feel the same way. Some of you may hate the shoe, you know, and let us know why, you know, what, what you like different about the 2012 versus 2019 pair, um, you know, and so just add in the comments and, you know, we'd love to hear y'all's feedback. Well, definitely, and please let us know if you like the 2012, if, if you own the 2012 and you own the 2019, if you can uh, let us know in the comment section which uh, shoe you like better uh, on, I mean, or should I say which additions on the, 2019 do you like better than the 2012 version that would be greatly appreciated and we'll stay active with y'all in the comment section and as always you know we'll get to the last part which is always my favorite i mean i love doing the reviews on the shoes but i always love doing what's on feet today and today we'll start with you i got something simple on the day i went ahead and went with the feeble folds you know red white and blue you know match the outfit and everything so i went ahead and just went with the feeble folds Definitely a nice shoe. And for me, release day of an iconic shoe, I had to come out with an iconic pair out of the closet. And today, I actually was the first time wearing these. Um, I still have the 2011 pair that got a lot of wear, you know, get get a lot of action in those. But I went ahead and MDS the uh, last year's pair. And um, so Black Cement 3, this is all I just mentioned. Definitely in my top three uh, uh, on the bread side colorway. And will always, <laughs> always, these two will always be in my collection with the bread ones as well. If I had to give away all my shoe collection, I'll give away all my shoes except that bread three, right? I mean, the black cement three, <laughs> bread three, whatever you call it. I am not giving that shoe up on my collection. That's going to be the, the long lasting shoe in my collection. Right? I'll be in the nurse home with a pair of them. You did. Take, give me some new shoe strings. They are all right, That's right. You know? It's like soul swapping if you got to. Man, something. <laughs> As always, we greatly appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all can be anywhere else, but y'all chose to dedicate y'all time with us, and we greatly appreciate it. Without y'all, no us. Thanks again for tuning in. This is your boy, Superb Kicks. That's our styles. Together, we're feats in the streets. We wear our pairs. Until next week, appreciate it.